Okay, today we're going to learn the proper cuts and skinning te caping techniques on a deer or any big game, elk, deer, moose, it's all going to be the same. One of the most important things we're going to do, now first we're going to remove the front legs, you can use either a saw or a knife. Sometimes the saw works easier because it's hard to find the right joints to cut. It's important to remove these at the joint. Don't cut these legs up here, way up here. I've had them come in that way to me. And you lose all your underarm. What we're trying to save today is all this nice underarm in here. We want this cape from here, from this point forward, to be in good shape. So we're going to take this deer and we're going to follow this white line which I call the underarm or the brisket area and the brown line and we're going to make a cut right in that line when we get to the back of the top leg here we're going to slant to the brisket up here we'll make the same cut on the other side We'll meet that spot. Now we're going to go from that spot. We're going to go all the way around this deer. Stay in at least four to six inches behind the shoulders. Pack thermos can always cut the cape off where he wants it. He can add to it, so make sure that you get plenty of plenty of hide. One other cut we're going to make today is we're going to start back here about two inches below the ear we're going to go right down the center of this back right to that cut we just made stay in the center because this is actually going to be your the part of the cape that's going to be sewn up on the mount there with all those cuts made now we're just going to proceed to skin this deer down just like you'd skin any deer. And as I said today, we're just taking the cape off this deer. We're not gonna skin the whole deer. This deer will probably go to lock or plant when it's done. Now, if you're not versed in skinning, a lot of the locker plants will cape a deer for you. They'll have a caping charge, of course. But one thing about it, when you shoot a trophy, Cape this deer as soon as you can. Don't, don't think just because it's cool out that the cape's going to be good. The pressure this cape is, when you take it off the animal and prep it for the taxidermist or get it to the taxidermist, the better your mount's going to be. You know, it's... Yeah, it probably won't rot in two or three days if the weather's right, but it will start to dry. It'll dry out around the eyes, the lips. You know, if, you, if you're spending the money on a mount, I assume you want the best looking mount you can get. And the best looking mount you're going to get is going to be one that's in the best shape when you get it to the taxidermist. And... The fresher that cape is, the better he's going to be able to work with it, the better job he should do with it. Personally, my own, my own animals, if I'm out hunting and I'm truly a trophy hunter, if I get a trophy that I'm going to mount, that means my, 
I've had a successful season, what's the harm in taking an hour or an hour and a half or whatever it takes you to cape this deer and properly take care of it so that you get the best mount out of it you, you want. I mean, if, if that's truly what you're after as a trophy, then you, you've succeeded. You just as well spend the time properly taking care of that trophy after you kill it. I mean, do, do the respect to the animal too, the, the mount, respect your taxidermist. It's all gonna determine what quality of a mount you get. This underarm area, this brisket area, is one spot that you will have problems with and you can put a hole in pretty easy, so be careful. The less holes you have, the better it's going to be. Now if your hoist will go higher and raise this deer higher, great. I've also done this job with these, with the animal laying on the ground, it's tougher. The bed of a pickup, you know, I've, you, can do, you can do this anyway. The main thing is those first cuts we made to do them right. Now as you can see, I've got a little meat left on this hide. I'll remove that during the next process. Right now I'm just trying to get it off the deer, trying to make your job easier if you aren't going to go to the next step. And now we've got the cape down. Cape the skin down to where we can cut into the juncture of the neck. We're going to carefully cut. Here again, if you've got access to a saw, you can saw it off. If you don't have access to saw, you're going to have to learn where to make these cuts so you can break this neck off. Usually a twist will break it right off. Now this all takes a lot of practice. And personally, I would find that there's the cape you want at this point. We'll go to the next step. You could freeze that cape, making sure you roll it up so that you got no exposed flesh. You could freeze that animal just the way it is. Or you can go to the next step. As you can see, there's the, there's the carcass. We're going to cover that meat and take it to a locker plant. But there, the deer is off the, off the carcass and prepared to go to the taxidermist. At this point. At this point, if you made the proper cuts when skinning it, this is what your cape's going to look like. It's a nice full cape. All the underarm, all the briskets in here yet. It'll make a beautiful mount.
These here are actually the front legs right here. The two front legs, you can see we've completely saved them. As I showed you, if you cut them off up high, right here's where you're going to be cutting. You're going to lose all this brisket. And then this is going to have to be pulled back. It's just not going to look good on the mount. At this point, you could roll this, you could roll this hide up, making sure you have no exposed flesh. And completely freeze it. If I were going to do that, I'd put it in a bag as best I could, at least up to the hide and around the horns a little bit, and get it as cold as possible or frozen. Just get this thing cooled down, get it to the taxidermist in this condition. This is the way I'd rather collect, get the specimen exactly like this. Um, but there again, you know, don't think you got to days and weeks to get the taxidermist just because of skin. You still got decay going on where this meat is up here in the head. I mean this this hides far from preserved. It can still rot. It can still get decayed just depending on your weather. The coolness. But get the taxidermist as soon as possible. One thing you don't want to do and a lot of people think well okay we got it to this point <clears throat> Let's salt this down and we'll preserve this hide. Well, that's all fine and dandy. You're going to preserve this back here, but this part up here, from here forward, you're not going to get any salt in there. So this is still going to decay up here. And this actually, <clears throat> when you look at a mount, you're going to notice the face and the ears long before you notice the neck and stuff. So the salt's really not going to do you any good at this point. So just, just get it frozen. At this point, that's the best, or to the taxidermist, whichever you feel most comfortable with. Um, we're gonna, if if you're gonna go the next step, if you are out in the woods, you have to take it to the next step. We'll we'll do that step now. completely caping this deer out. The next step I like to do, and you need, you need sharp equipment, sharp knives. I, I use a scalpel at this point. They've got a new scalpel out, it's a piranha. It's got a longer blade on it than this. Um, they're a good knife. I would, I would get myself one if you can't, if you don't know how to sharpen knives. I keep it with me at all times. In fact, I carry one with me. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna very carefully go inside this mouth, right next to the jawline. And the thing about this step, people, is practice on animals you're not gonna mount. I don't care if it's a doe, a little buck. You know, this, this is a, this is a step that is hard to do. This this next step is not an easy an easy process. It's it's a learned process. But the first thing I do is I open the mouth up, completely skin the bottom jaw down. As you can see, I've got the top jaw probably half inch up all the way around. This is just going to make it easier to bring this animal and hide it back down over the nose. But as I said, find a doe or a small buck. If you ain't going to mount your deer this year, practice on it. You know, this is one of them steps that's going to take four, five, six, you know, maybe even more times than that to get good at it. And it might even take 20 to get good, but you can, you can at least get respectable at this step doing four or five of them but it's you know there's a lot there's a lot of intricate cuts we're going to do here today and you need to practice them the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be very careful of the hair I'm going to find a spot right not on the way back side of the burr but I'm going to find a spot back on the burr on both sides, and I'm gonna make a short Y. And by short, I mean, I'm gonna match my 
point right here on this Y. I'm going to come directly over to it. I'm not going to start here and go all the way back to these ear butts and cut way back to here. I do not want to cut into these ear butts. I see so many people do this step and the one mistake they make is they cut into these ear butts. Don't do that. You can make this short Y right in these points. Some people actually go from burr to burr and then, then down. I prefer the short Y so I'm going to find my spot back here in the burr. I'm going to take the sharp point of that knife and I'm just going to work it down that hide. There at that point I've got one half of my short Y done right to that point there. I'm going to keep my eyes on that point. I'm going to start the other side. Now I knew where my two points came together. Right there is my where my two points came together. That's the short part of my Y. Now I'm going to go from when we skin this, I'm going to bring these two points together like so. Now I've got all my cuts made in this deer. At this point my cuts are made, we're ready to skin. Very carefully we're just going to start skinning this around. I'll, I'll work both sides down at the same time. Get that hide laid up on the table or on the ground so it doesn't pull on you. Right now we're, we're at the ear butt right already. Okay, I stay right next to the bone on the animal. And you can see where that ear butt is. Right there. Now, like I said, this takes practice because of the intricate part. It's going to take you a few times just to figure out where all these spots are. The ear butts, the eyes, all those spots. Now I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to repeat that same process on the other side. Staying closer to the bone. When you find that ear butt, it's going to look just like a hole going into the head and going into the hide. But at this point, the ears are completely cut away from the head. Okay, now that I've got an open area here, I'm going to go right back to where I made this short Y cut. And I'm going to make sure my hide's completely cut right up underneath that horn. I don't want any hide hanging on from front to back. Now I like to use a screwdriver at this point. I'll take a screwdriver, I'll just drive it up in underneath there, and I'll peel them two sides loose. The less I have to put a knife up under there, the less chance I have of nicking that spot that has to go back together under the horn. So I pulled that forward up on the head, now if everything works right I can grab this ear and I can just pull that around because I've got it all loose. Now at this point I'm going to very carefully cut the rest of it loose with my knife. Now if you were skinning a doe for practice and a doe works just fine because the hardest parts of these are still going to be the ears and the eyes, the tear ducts, and the mouth and the nose. Getting around the horns is probably the easiest part of caping this deer out. So everything on a doe is going to be the same except going around the horns. That would be one step that's eliminated, but you can still learn 90% of this step of caping. Same with taking it off the animal. You can do a doe the same as a buck coming off of the carcass. And like I said, you can get the same practice with a doe. This is a step. The good thing about this step is we'll carry it all the way through, but there's more stopping points. You know, a lot of people don't have room in their freezer for this set of horns. Or you want to show the set of horns off. You know, you haven't made a decision whether you're going to mount this deer yet or not. So if you learn this point and you take this cape off, you can put this cape away. 
or you're in a different state. You know, we can't go from, or people can't go from South Dakota to Minnesota with a deer that has any brain matter in it. Now I'm gonna stand this deer up on its horns. I'm completely, I'm completely around the horns. Right now I'm going down the bottom jaw a little ways, getting it opened up. Okay, our next critical point comes right at this point. We've got everything opened up here. It's all forward. It's all forward of the horns, everything's open. Right here, as you'll learn, is the back of the eye. Now I take my finger and I catch the back side of the eyelid inside. That way I know where to cut. My finger is right here and I'm very carefully keeping my finger there. Now when I know I'm deep enough and I'm not going to cut that eyelid, I'll open my eye up. Now you're going to have a hole where the eye is, but you're going to have all that eyelid intact. This again is one step. Now when you go to the tear duct, just make sure you stay in front of this eye. It's where the tear duct is. Stay, stay deep enough. Open that. Now we'll flip it over. We'll repeat that process on the opposite side. And I can't stress enough practice this before you go out into the woods after your trophy. Go to the locker plant. Go to your local locker plant and do a little dumpster diving. Get yourself four or five doe heads. All you really need to do at this point is the doe head. Take them home and practice on them. There, at this point, both eyes are cut. We're loose all the way up. We're going to cut way back here in the mouth. We're going to cut, cut this open. Now, we've already cut this bottom jaw and this top jaw away some. So what that did is that allowed us to easily remove this bottom jaw. Just stay way back in the mouth at this point. You're going to have a lot of lip line there, but very carefully cut that bottom jaw away. Now we'll just skin the top jaw down over the nose. And I know it's really hard to watch and, and learn this. I don't care if you were standing right here watching it or watching it on film. It's still all about practice. Doing it yourself, looking at it, figuring out what you did wrong. Watch this, watch this tape again after you, after you do it and you got some problems. Watch the tape and listen to what I have to say. But, just learn where your cuts are. Like I said, it's going to take four or five, maybe even more. When we get down on the nose, we just trim the nose off at that point. Now we've got the cape completely off the head. We're going to lay this head aside. Here's what you're Nose, everything looks like on your animal. Everything lays together. Now at this point, this animal would easily go in a place to freeze. So you just, I would roll it up, put it in a plastic bag. I would leave the head and the ears somewhat out. I'd light, you know, just roll it up like that, put it in a plastic bag, mark it, and freeze it. Throw it in the freezer. It'll last, as long as it's wrapped up good in a bag, it'll last three, four months like that with no problem, maybe even six. You wouldn't have to do anything with it. So there's the next step, completely finished. That's another stopping point. Now, like I said, you got time to get it to the tax thermos as long as you get it frozen. The horns can be cut off the head. We'll show you that step later. But this is just another stopping point. If you need, if you need, if you're out in the woods, 
and you need to go the final step, the final phases, we'll go through those steps and phases right now. Here again, you're going to need a good sharp knife, scalpel, whatever you use. I use a scalpel mostly at this point. Just keep your turned inside out now now you're gonna do the next step you're gonna find your ear butt and you're very carefully gonna start opening your ear up and as I said this all takes practice just get this ear butt opened up now picture where the corner of this ear is right here. You don't want to cut that corner out. So that corner is right here. So we don't want we don't want to cut that corner. Now I got a neat little tool to turn these ears inside out. But this first one today I'm going to show you without using that little tool that can be done. You can use a screwdriver, a blunt, any blunt thing. Just put that screwdriver on your knee or in your lap and very carefully. Excuse me. The next step in keeping this steer is going to be you have to turn the ears and the lips in order to salt it. We'll work the nose. I always use a system. I do the ears first, then I go to the nose and lips. Just the way I do it, you can do it any any order you want. It's all got to be done. But right now we're just finding the base of this ear. Basically just skinning this ear. And turning it inside out, out as we go. I got a little scalpel again. Now this is the front of the ear, right here is the corner, so I got my finger there, I don't want to cut through that, so I'm going to stop at that point, that's right at the corner of my ear. Now this first ear will turn without our ear turning tool, this will show you that it can be done if you're out in the wild, you don't have to have a tool, you will need a blunt stick or blunt screwdriver or something, we'll just keep working this ear. Turning it as you go. I'm just pushing inside with my thumb and my fingers to kind of keep pressure. Basically when we get this ear turned it's going to be the same shape inside as it was when we started on the outside. It'll have the same shape to it. Now I would use a blunt stick or a blunt screwdriver and I just work it up into that ear keep pressure on it and just cut or pull as you need to once you get to a certain point sometimes you can pull these ears especially on deer you can work them with your thumb elk, moose you're not gonna basically you'll use the same concept on elk and moose that I'm using on this deer. Just a lot bigger animal, a lot heavier skin. As you can see this is this is one of them projects that takes some time again you're gonna have to learn it. It's gonna take some practice, get some dull heads and practice doing the ears and the lips. It's the intricate part, but 
It's an important part of the mount when it's done, so it's got to be done properly. Whether you're going to be a hunter, just a hunter that's going to do it out in the wilderness so you can preserve the cape, or if you're a taxidermist doing it for your customers, it has to be done right. Now you're going to see when I use this little tool next how much faster this process goes, but when you use that tool you have to be careful too so you don't split the ear with it. Sometimes you get carried away. This ear is going to have a notch in it so it's going to be tougher to begin with. As you do enough of these, you'll learn to see the cartilage thins out as you get towards the edge of the ear. You can actually see the cartilage line stop at that point. Don't, don't tear the corner, don't tear the edges. thumbnail quite a bit in this in this one just because it's I'm going a complete way without using the ear opener that a taxidermist would have but if I was going out hunting in the woods and backpacking in I wouldn't wait my backpack on an ear opener because I can do it without it can be done without maybe not as easy but you'll have time out in the woods once you kill an animal get it properly done. That's what your ear is going to look like. I just trimmed the meat off the butt. That's what one ear turned inside out. Inverted looks like. We'll grab the other ear. Just repeat the process. We're going to find the base of the ear again. Start skinning the ear off. Separate the skin from the ear. Now this one's going to be more for you taxidermists that have the proper tools in your shop or can get the proper tools. Once you're set up for business, your first view, if you're just practicing, you don't have to have this tool, but it's just a ear opener. Come, this one comes from Research Mannequins. They have them in Van Dykes. There's two or three different styles of them, but once I got this ear open like that, I just get this thing carefully worked underneath there, up as far as I've skinned start squeezing it. Now once I get so far up I'm going to put my finger up here right on the right on the tip of this ear opener so that I don't as I'm squeezing it I don't split too far. This my fingers are going to help me control how wide I'm opening this ear. If I slip open it too far I'm going to just split her wide open but basically we're just what we did with our thumbnail and knife before we're just doing with this little tool. Well, don't expect this to work on buffalo or bears because it won't. It'll work on elk, moose, deer, antelope. Be very careful on antelope. Basically there I got a bunch of the ear open with that little tool a lot faster. Now I just, I'm going to do my finish work on this ear. Like I said, this ear had a split in. That split may open up now, it may not. We'll see when we get to it. You have to feel your customers out. Normally I repair them splits because it makes it easier to mount them. So I really don't care if it does open up at this point. But some customers want them left in. If, that, if that's the case, then you don't want to open them up. So I'm going to try not to open it up, but sometimes since it's a scar, the pressure will just pop it and it'll open up so as you can see I'm use, I'll use my scalpel my finger my just pushing that bar up in there putting pressure on it there's the one side of that split open now we'll try to do the other side without splitting it open got 
pretty good scar right where that split ended, so I don't know if I'm going to get this or not. Nope, you got a hole in it. Just not letting me open it past this point for because of that scar tissue. I'm going to try to be very careful and open this without opening that split. If you do open the split and they want it back in, then you have to sew the split back in. But there's a lot of scar tissue on this where the split was made either from a fence or fighting or whatever the cause was. It's just opening up on me. You can see where it's opening. It's just going to have to be repaired at, during the finish stages because there's just sometimes there's no, it's just part of the cape. That's why you have to learn how to repair stuff because you're in this business, you're always going to be repairing if you're becoming a taxidermist. Well, we got. Got her pretty well open, not too bad a condition. That split opened up a little, it can be repaired. Now we're just gonna trim the meat off of the ear butt. Our next step's gonna be to move to the nose and the lips. Usually when I get up here, my first spot is to separate these two nostrils, my fingers below underneath below the pad so I can feel where I'm cutting. A lot of days I feel more than I see when I'm doing this kind of work. This is this is the delicate work of the mounting process to get this properly done. I want it thinned out so it tans good and it salts good. There's the nostrils opened up. Now we're going to move to the back corner of the lip and I just grab that back piece of the lip, inner lip, and I'm just going to start working working from the back corner all the way around this mouth. Basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this, this is connected, I'm just going to flay it like you would a steak. I'm going to open it up. Actually, if I cut all the way through, I'd have two pieces, two thin pieces when I was done instead of one thick piece. But I want to leave it connected at the lip line. Lip line's right here. So I'm just going to carefully go down. I'm going to leave at least, oh, I'd say a little over a sixteenth of an inch of hide connected where I'm going. It's it's pretty thin, might be, might be an eighth of an inch on bigger animals. Deer it usually gets down around a sixteenth of an inch. You can, you can feel where it's pretty even. You're going you're gonna to shave it down more in the mounting process. So just be careful not to cut all the way through. Get this excess meat off of here. So you got more hide than meat. But Basically, I just started back on the other side and come to the center again. Here again, it's just, it's all practice and feel. Do it enough times and It'll come naturally. If I, had, if I had to guess, lips are probably a little easier to learn and perfect than the ears are. Because the ears throw so many different curves at you with splits and scars and that kind of stuff that'll open up. Lips are 
natural all the way. They just got to be split down to the tip with a good sharp scalpel. Sometimes it takes more than one blade to do it. This is the front lip. Front lip's thinner than the top lip. You'll usually start to see some hair follicles when you're cutting on the front lip because it's so thin in that area. Basically just work it completely around. There's my lips done. All I did there was trim the excess off that was sticking back in these corners. I don't like to salt it and have it go to the tannery. You can see what's excess, what isn't. But right now I probably got at minimum a half inch of lip split down, maybe down here in the front mouth, only a quarter. But I try to keep a half inch all the way around going to the tannery. Don't want much more. If you get too much, then they have a tendency occasionally their machinery will catch it and rip it. So. The next step will be to flesh this height and then we'll go to the salt.
This time we have this hide flashed, all ready to go to the salt. Now if you're going to pack into the woods and you're deer hunting only, I'd say 12 pounds of salt should do you for a cape this size. If you're going to go for elk, you're going to want 30 pounds or a little more, 30, 35 pounds of salt packed in with you. If, if you're going to need to go through this step completely, if you can get these capes frozen, or at least keep them below 35 degrees for a couple days or 40 40 for a couple days probably wouldn't hurt once they're off and rolled up good but don't let the skin be exposed unless you're salting because it'll dry out and cause other other problems so but at this point we're going to go to the salt i'm just going to dump some salt on it now being in my shop i'm going to use a little extra salt so it makes it a little easier i probably use now I do three capes out of 50 pounds, so I run probably what, a little over 16 pounds is what I average. But you can get by with 10 to 12 out in the woods pretty easy. I just work that in the cape, make sure that cape stretched out good. Make sure you got that bottom jaw covered with salt, maybe a little inside doesn't hurt. Make sure everything stays flat and tight. The nose, the nostrils, the lips need salt and good. Make sure you working in all these areas. Make sure you got the ears salted good. As you can see, I laid the head and ears up onto my hide. Covered them good with salt. Make sure the whole bottom part here is opened up as you're salting. Has a tendency of rolling at the edges or in this brisket area, and if you don't get that salt on all parts of it, you'll have some slippage in those areas. But now if you're out in the woods and you're doing it with less salt, come back in a day or even six, eight hours later, rub it around, pick it up, make sure you got salt all over the place and inspect it. Tomorrow I'll probably resalt this cape. Pick it up once and resalt it to make sure it's all good, but that's going to finish the salting part of this cape and we'll move on from there. The final step to preparing this deer, if you're out hunting, 
and you don't want to pack this extra meat out, and especially if it's an elk or a moose, you don't want to pack it out. We're going to find the back part of this horn. We're going to go about an inch down on the back of the skull. And we're going to center right through that eyeball. Now in the shop I can use a sawzall. If you're out in the wild you're probably just going to have a hand saw you're going to have to cut this off with. But you want to save that whole skull so as I said we're going to go about an inch down. We're going to go right straight through the center of that eyeball. Now when we get down to the eye, we're going to turn it around. I'm going to cut it off right behind the eyeball. We can discard the head. At this point, now, you would have taken your measurements if you were taxidermist by this point, or your other measurements. I'll have to grab another head and show you how to take those measurements. We're going to dig the brain cavities out. We don't want any more meat on this, so if you're out in the woods, you're going to want to clean this up as best you can. Throwing brain cavities away, that brain away. If you're out in the woods, you're going to want to trim all that excess meat off. If you're in your shop and you're a taxidermist, at this point, I'd do just like I do with a European. I'd wrap aluminum foil around here. I'd get that skull plate in some boiling water. 15 minutes of boiling water and that meat will come right off and that skull will be ready to mount. You'll trim the skull. As you can see, we left it plenty big at this point. You'll trim it when you put it on your head later. But they can be laid aside and they're ready to go. We should have taken proper measurements of that animal earlier. One step I forgot in this film this morning. So we're going to do it now on this one. If you have your tape, if you don't, your taxidermist will have to figure this out. I figured thousands of them out, but if you're a taxidermist and you want these measurements, you line it up at the end of the, right at the end of the nose, you lay it out to the corner of the eye. This one is seven and a quarter inches. So you're going to want to remember that measurement, seven and a quarter. We'll measure the cape in a little bit when we get it off the head, but you lay your cape out just like we had it when we salted and measure right behind the ear. When it comes to measuring a deer, we showed you how to do the nose and the eye measurements. There's two different ways to measure the cape for neck size on a deer. If you've got the meat of the deer on the neck, that's actually the way I like to do it. I just run the tape around the neck. I don't go way down in this crease I stay in the, I'll stay right up on the swell, just probably a couple inches. I'll lay my tape, I won't stretch it tight, I'll just snug it. As you can see it says 21 inches right there on the cape. That's going from the neck just a little bit on the swell. If you drop way down in here, that's actually your C measurement, which is considerably smaller. The B measurement, just, just Two inches up on the swell, probably three inches behind the ear butt, is where you get that accurate measurement on the neck. If you don't have the neck meat, the other way you can do it is you can relax your tape out. Remember your deer neck has a natural taper to it, so you want to keep the neck getting wider as you go down. You get that neck laid, you get that laid out nice, you lay that tape across there and you come up with the same 21 inches going right probably 
two and a half inches below the ears, two inches below the ears. It'll lay out a 21. That means that cape's going to fit a 21 inch form. 21 inch is a nice respectable deer cape. Um, 26 inch is the biggest form they make for deer that I've found. I've never mounted a deer on a 26 inch form. Most companies quit at either 23 or 24 inch neck forms. I've used a few 24s, very few in 28 years. I've used quite a few 23s, but 21s, 22, going to catch a lot of your trophy deer. Um, if, you're, if you're a hunter taking a measurement for taxidermist, don't embarrass yourself. I've had people call me and tell me they've got a deer cape that'll go 30 inches. And it's like, I've mounted a lot of elk on 28 inch form over the years. And we all know that an elk is a bigger animal than a deer. So just keep in mind a 22, 21 to 23 inch deer neck is a big mature deer, depending on the area you're hunting in. But at that point, we're going to log in our measurements, write them down for the taxidermist, and proceed with the cape.